Shea. 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 Got my nigga cheese in this bitch. Midwest. Midwest, Midwest UGK, Midwest. nigga. Oh, you already know. Shea. I said my hands on this money. I'm caught up in this lifestyle. This hundred round drummy. Hit a knock a nigga right down. My dope on my scale. If he knockin' watch lights out. My spot do be booming. I'm caught up in this lifestyle. My hands on this money. I'm caught up in this lifestyle. Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. First off and for, for, first and foremost, when you come into the crib, it's only right that you wipe your feet on the rug. It's called manners. Secondly, speak. Thirdly, not just thirdly, because that should be first too, but hit that like button. Subscribe to the channel. Ding the notification bell. It was time for that culture for the streets okay we got to talk about it we got to talk about it we just got to talk about it Nicki minaj man now i'm not gonna take nothing from Nicki because she even had a solid career she been in the game for a long time but we all know hip-hop is like football now what i mean by hip-hop is like football right the average running back got three to five years to have a, a beast mode run in the sport of football, right? It's almost similar in hip hop because in hip hop, you come in young. Once you age to a point that they don't consider you young, you kind of decline because the young world really are the ones that's more tuned into hip hop. They doing all the streaming, they watching the videos, they watching and following the artists on Instagram. They doing the majority of that, right? So let's just be honest, they don't want to too much watch somebody that's not in their age bracket. So if they 21, they, they, they 17, 16, they don't really want to watch a, a 30 year old, a 35 year old, a 40 year old, a 45 year old person do music, make videos. Ooh, ooh, ooh. It's new people coming in every day that's still in the young bracket. That's where they're going to tune into. So where what I see when I see Nikki being outspoken about certain things that she doing, these are things that play in her brain constantly because Nikki is used to having the light shining on her because at one point in hip hop, she was the top female. Not to say that she's not the top still, but at one point, Nikki was the one, the only one. It wasn't a Megan, a Megan Thee Stallion. It wasn't a Cardi B. It wasn't a Glorilla. It wasn't a Lotto. It wasn't none of these people that was really in her way. It was just Nikki. Everything was Nikki. So Nikki could push her envelope. And Nikki could stay at the top. She was like the Statue of Liberty to the female category of hip hop. But now hip hop is so plentiful with female rappers. You got Sexy Red, Glorilla, Cardi B. You got the city girls, you got so many different female artists that's being successful when they get so much light. Like, look at Cardi B. Cardi B is younger than Nicki. So the younger generation follow Cardi more today than they follow Nicki. And that light dimming on Nicki is making her bitter inside. And it shows because instead of being like how Cardi B is, now this is one thing I do want to point out between Cardi B and Nicki Minaj. Cardi B show love to the up and coming female artists. It's even artists I've seen Cardi B go hop on songs with that was up and coming. They wasn't even jumping like that, right? You don't see Nikki doing this. She only wants to mess with the elite. And that's fine, that's cool, but when you when you close the door on the up and coming talent, don't expect for them to open the door for you. And that's where you get your glow and your, your, your uh 
all these other female artists, they're not reaching out to you before they reach out to you. They're going to go get the Cardi B feature. They're going to go get the Lotto feature. Why? Because the way that you address the state of hip hop in the female category and why you're not shining like they are, even though you're the bigger brand in the situation, It keeps the younger generation not wanting to really reach out to you. And that's and that's and that's really hurting your brand because you people do want to see. I'm not gonna sit here and say nobody wants to see a Glorilla and Nikki track, a Glorilla and City Girls, and no a Glorilla. I mean, you see what I'm saying? A Nikki and all these and, and all these features. Lotto. Like we would like to see all these songs, but because Nikki is built the way she is mentally. We probably will never see it. And in return, you see Nikki. It's just like how the young look at the old and be like, the old Nick's hating. She's the old head that's hating in this situation. She's, you see what I'm saying? She like is showing, is wearing on her attire. And then to be doing Queen Radio and then be, and this is after Offset, the Cardi B incident at the VMAs. Keep in mind that was so out of pocket. You're supposed to be professional. You're supposed to be the queen in the game. You don't see Queen Elizabeth. You didn't see no queens acting other than what they were, which was queens. You want to show us that you're still so street. You want to show us like you're in a whole nother bracket now. you so detached from that. Yeah, you still got a street husband, but he supposed to be following your lead because you're the breadwinner. He's not the breadwinner. Don't let him be the downfall of your brand, first and foremost. Secondly, when people have issues, it's hard to ask for help, right? Because people are always judged at a moment when they need help and not judgment. Hence the reason why so many celebrities don't go to their loved ones for help. Don't go to their real friends for help. Don't go to their associates for help because they don't want to receive the critical judgment. So we see all these people that have issues, the Kodaks, the YBs, the Nicki Minaj. She's not the only one. So while we sit here talking about it, it's, she's not the only one. It's a lot of celebrities that just have a cry for help that ain't being answered because they don't know how to ask the right people that care for them correctly for help. You see what I'm saying? And in this situation, we it's like we watching Nikki self-destruct. Don't believe me? Look at that. See what I'm saying? 
that's not typical Nikki. Granted, she might got a pass from when she was with Safari. Granted, in Nikki's younger time, she might have been a wilder person, but we all are when we're younger. We still have the mentality of a teenager at that point when we're in our younger 20s. Nikki, a grown woman now. You got to make better decisions. The choices you make have to be precise because all eyes are on you at all times. Just like these things you have been doing in the last couple of weeks. All eyes on you and it's not all eyes on you in a good way. This ain't the type of attention you really want because it hurts your brand. Not to mention you got your husband walking around like he run, okay, let the man be the man in the house, but at the same time, you are a brand. He supposed to protect the brand. Sitting at the VMAs with niggas with dry Nike hoodies on, talking about where you at, Offset, and we looking for you. That's not the proper time to be addressing any issues. Y'all can do that another time. This is the wrong time. You own business time. But you bring in street time to business time, and she's allowing these types of things to happen, and that's hurting her brand. It's affecting her brand. Now, DJ Academics went on to point out a few things, too, about Nikki, as far as like her past and leading up to date presently about what's going on with her and a lot of things that certain people don't probably don't understand, but like me, I understand when people dealing with certain things and they don't know how to get it off their chest, right? Just like I know when people crying for help and people don't receive it because when you got a lot of yes men around you and you really need somebody to vent to and you really need that assistance to come up out that slump you in, you can't depend on nobody that's a yes man. to be the one to confide in. And I'm going to say that because everything is up. You right. Okay. They not telling you about yourself. They not telling you what you need to be doing to fix what you doing wrong to make it right. They, they, they just going to agree with you. You need people that's going to be able to tell you about yourself and you respect it. That's why it's important to have people like that around you. Not just people that say, okay, all right, you right. Okay. All right. You right. Okay. All right. You right. Am I right? Now check out this DJ Academics. Your program is kind of dirt because, you know, I expected some things, as you kept saying, you was going to get into some things. You ain't getting into a motherfucking thing. So this is why people are here to watch me now, because I'm going to get into some things. Grandma, you got to get sober. The whole industry called me yesterday. She back on that shit. They're calling you a crackhead. They're calling you... They've called you some of the worst things that... You're the female version of Famous Dex, how they talking to me. I just want to be very clear. Nikki, th yesterday was a bad day for you. Bad day. I heard about things I never knew about. How many times you have been... Crashing out privately that people who are, who cared about you and respected your brand buried videos, paid people off because you're just a wild fucking magnet. You're you're a druggie. Allegedly. Allegedly. But I'm hearing there's some videos exist. They said your addiction has gone all the way back to when Safari was there. Allegedly, you abusing him, swinging baseball bats, doing this. You got a mountain of, of, that, of that powder on the... Okay. At some point when you watch DJ Academics talk about Nikki, you could tell it's some ill will between the two of them. When academics talk about certain people, you can tell if he's just using them for content, and then you can separate the people he's using for just content from the people he got real ill will towards in his content. 
Nikki one of those people. So to see what Nikki doing and being able to critique and judge her at the same time is perfect for DJ academics. But this go this also goes back to what I was saying when people need help, like you talking about her problems, you talking about her issues, you pointing out things that she doing wrong, things that's wrong, things she shouldn't be doing. Why is she doing that? When we see people like that, we so ready to pass judgment, where's the help? And that's that's where the industry has a dark side because when you really need help, if you're surrounded by people that really don't love you, you won't receive that help, but you'll receive all the judgment, bruh. And like I said, I'm here to talk about Nikki, but I'm not here to throw her brand, her character, nor her image in a dumpster. Because at the end of the day, she's human. At the end of the day, none of us perfect. At the end of the day, we all go through stuff that sometimes we don't know how to even deal with. And when we got people around us that's steady smiling and yeah, okay, all right, yes man characters, who do we really have to get us back right? Who do we really have to, to, to get us back in our square, to get us back on our dean? Who do we really have to get our help get our mind back right? Because when you don't have these things, you're going to get lost and you're going to stay lost. And the more loss you get, the more people start seeing that your character that they came to love is starting to fade away and you turn into something else. And people that followed you turn away from you. Nikki had a place in her career where she don't have to do much to maintain her brand. So to want to be bitter about other female artists that's selling and getting the light and getting the shine. You got to understand, Nikki, you had the light all to yourself for a decade. Just like Jordan had to pass the torch to Kobe, you got to pass the torch too to somebody. Everybody got to pass the torch at one point in time. You ain't exempt from that. I just think when you got an image, you got to think about the things you do. Think about what you put on that camera. Think about what you say, because those three things come back to haunt you in the worst way. And you get the most critical judgment from it. Look at what's going on. You got Remy allegedly wanting to sue Tasha K. When Tasha K, that's what she do. She make content. People watch it. Granted, regardless if people believe it or not, that's her thing. You don't got people trying to sue Remy because they sick of her dressing the way she dressed or because she doing this and doing it. You see what I'm saying? So at some point, it's like if you don't want certain things to be talked about, you have to move a certain way so these types of things just seem irrelevant when they are spoken upon. But when somebody's sitting here speaking on something that looks exactly like what they're speaking on, can you really fault them for that? No, you can't. Let me know what y'all think about the situation, man. Drop some comments and before you leave about my house, hit that like button. Subscribe to the channel. Ding the notification bell. It's time for that culture for the streets. Hosted by Mafia Paint. Lock my door before you leave up out of here, man. See you next time. We out.